It's just still so disappointing that we're still in the realms of surrender. Act. For goodness sake, Leader of the House, let's try and see if we can improve the language that's been used in this House. And using terms like that is singularly inappropriate, and I believe just does not catch the mood of this House at all. But, with Madam Deputy Speaker, he's, he's said the statement with all the enthusiasm of, I don't know, the, a Prime Ministerial speech at a People's Vote rally. This is, of course, <laughs> the last thing that he wants to bring to the House, the constraints that were given to this Government under this Northern Ireland Etc Act. And we did this because we ensured we didn't want to have this situation where they could possibly have their no deal scenario. And thank goodness we have this extra piece of security at our disposal to ensure that this government continues to have to come to Parliament every week in order to give some sort of statement. So we're grateful for that. But can I join the concerns of the, the, the Labour spokesperson? We need to see more about this, and it's just not good enough to glibly say, sorry, it's not available. This should have been available to, to us, Leader of the House. And can I ask them how many hours are set aside for this tomorrow? We're half through the Queen's speech, this is now going to be included. Is it going to be disrupting of the business of being able to debate the Queen's speech? How long will we get to debate this? And can I also share the concerns about Saturday? We need to hear what is happening on Saturday. We need to have some sort of plan. We are from Scotland, Leader of the House. Off. You've already destroyed our confidence. We're all here, Let missing our leader's speech today. Yeah. We're possibly going to have to go back. We don't know what we're going to be doing. Give us some certainty and security. And can I say to him, if he's going to say to me, Order. Order. I didn't hear what the honourable gentleman said at the end of his question, and I guess that lots of other people didn't, so I'm going to ask him to repeat it, and the House ought to listen to the last bit of the honourable gentleman's question. Deputy Speaker, I'm, I'm tempted to start from the very beginning with my remarks, because such enthusiasm by colleagues across the floor, and, and isn't it ridiculous? You know, all we're sort of saying is give us a bit of certainty, and they're trying to shout me down because of that. What an absolutely appalling Take way to do it! And it just shows yes. you how bad and febrile this house has become. It's a very legitimate question, leader of the house. When will we secure certainty about the weekend? It was all about events. Will he tell us that they will be concluded by Saturday, so we can sit? So come on, tell us what's happening. When will we hear what's going on? And when? How long will we be sitting tomorrow night? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I think with regard uh, to language, I've just been called a pot by Mr Kettle, so I don't think I will worry about that on Julie. Uh, with regard to the motion that I've announced to take place tomorrow, uh, the Honourable Gentleman is a very well-established member of this House, and he will know that it is a proceeding under an Act, and proceeding under an Act, understanding orders are subject to 90-minute debates whenever they come on, and they are allowed to come on after the moment of conclusion of the House. I refer the Honourable Gentleman on Saturday to what I said earlier. Sittings on Saturday are highly abnormal. To have inconvenience three times in 70 years is not unreasonable, and it will only happen if we have to have something subject to what goes on in the European Councils uh, to debate on Saturday. And I think members putting their duty to this House first, as we all try to do, do not find that an unreasonable or insupportable burden. 